In this video, we're going to see how to integrate odd powers of sec x and tan x. So last video, we looked at even powers. Now we're looking at odd powers. Now, our first example is something that you may have already seen before because it's something that can be done using two unit knowledge or advanced knowledge. It's the integral of tan x dx. Now, the way we deal with this is we write tan x as the ratio of sine over cos. So this is going to be sine x over cos x. And the reason we do that is because now we have a fraction where we have some function on the denominator, and that's cos x in this case. But what's the derivative of cos x? The derivative is minus sine. Now we have sine on top, but if we can multiply by a negative one here and then another negative one here, we haven't done anything to the overall value, except now we have the derivative of the denominator in the numerator. And so we know that that's gonna turn out to be a log. So this is going to be minus log of the absolute value of cos x plus c. Now this is fine, you could stop here if you wanted to, but we can do a little bit more with this because we know a few log laws. The negative one that's at the coefficient of the log can be brought up into the power. So this will be log of cos x to the power negative one, which is just the reciprocal of cos x, and we know that that is sec x. So this just gives you a bit of a, ni a nicer way of writing it, a bit neater. Okay, and that is your final answer. The next example is the integral of sec x dx. Now the way that we deal with this one is a bit counterintuitive, it's not really something that's very obvious, but we're going to multiply by 1. Okay, so we've got sec x, and we're going to multiply by 1, but 1 is going to be written in a bit of a funny way. It's going to be written as, let's write it in blue, it's going to be written as sec x plus tan x divided by sec x plus tan x. So I've multiplied and divided by the same thing, which is not doing anything to the overall value of the function. But let's expand what we have on top. We have sec times sec squared or sec times sec, which gives sec squared. And then we have sec times tan, which is sec x tan x. And that's being divided by sec x plus tan x. Now, the really genius thing about this trick is that if you have a look at it, well, what's the derivative of tan? The derivative of tan is sec squared. And what is the derivative of sec? That's sec x tan x. So I have a fraction where I have some function in the denominator and I have its derivative on top. And that is just gonna turn out to be the log of the denominator. So log of sec x plus tan x. And of course, plus c. The third example is the integral of tan to the power of five x. Now, when we were looking at even powers of sec and tan, we used the identity one plus tan squared is equal to sec squared. And that was something that derives from the Pythagorean identity. And this was very useful. Now, when we're looking at odd powers of tan, we're actually also going to use this identity. But when you look at the identity, it's only dealing with tan squared and sec squared. So it's only dealing with even powers. Now that suggests that if we want to use this identity, we need to change our integrand so that there's an even power of tan or sec showing. And the way we're going to do that is by factoring out a tan x. So if we factor out a tan x, we'll be left with something that's one less than an odd power, which is an even power. And in this case, it's tan to the power four x. Of course, tan to the power four is just tan squared squared. And so we can substitute using our identity and get sec squared minus one for tan squared. And then we have to square that again for tan to the four. And now we can expand this out. So I'm going to do this all in one step. It's going to be tan x times sec squared x, sorry, sec to the four x minus two times tan x sec squared x minus or plus tan x. 
and all of that is integrated with respect to x. Now, we've already seen how to integrate this part here. We've already seen how to integrate 10x. The other two might cause a little bit of a problem. So, there's a few things that we've already used in the previous video when we were looking at integration with 10 and sec. We already know that the derivative of 10x is equal to sec squared x, and that can come in very handy. There's another one that we've already used actually in this video, but I'm just going to write it here explicitly. It's the derivative of sec x, which is sec x 10x. Okay, now these two right here come in very handy when you want to try to make a substitution. Knowing the derivatives of functions is very helpful when you're making a substitution. And we're going to use the second one here. So I'm actually going to split this one integral into two integrals, and you'll see why in a moment. I'm going to write it as 10. The first two functions I'm going to keep in one integral, and then I'm going to have the integral of 10x by itself. But what I'm also going to do with these first two functions, I'm actually going to factor out a 10x sec x, because I really want to use this idea here. The fact that the, the derivative of sec x is 10x times sec x. So if I do that with the first function, there's the derivative, and then we're left with sec cubed x. If I do that with the next function, there's the derivative again in brackets, and I'm left with a sec x. Okay, and let's just keep that as one integral, and then plus the integral of 10x dx. Okay, and we know how to do 10x, that was the first example in the video. So really we're concerned about, about this first integral here. All right, now, I've got this sitting here. These happen to be the derivative of sec x. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to factor those out from both terms. So I have the integral of sec cubed x minus 2 times sec x. Now I'm factoring out the tan x sec x, so that can sit out here. 10x sec x dx. And well, we know what the integral of 10x is. That was the log of sec x. So let's just write it down here. Whoops, we don't need the plus c yet. Let's leave it there for the moment. Okay, now to deal with this first integral, we're going to make the substitution u equals sec x because I can see that the derivative is sitting quite nicely out the back there. So u equals sec x. And when you differentiate, you'll end up with du equals sec x times 10x dx. And that is exactly what we have here. There's our derivative, sec x, 10x dx. So that's going to get substituted for du. So we have the integral of sec cubed x, which is going to become u cubed, minus 2 times sec, which becomes 2u. The bit that's highlighted in green, well, that's exactly du. And then we also have the plus log of this sec. Now, this is pretty easy to integrate. U, u cubed becomes u to the 4 on 4. This becomes u squared. And then we have this bit still in the end. And now, because there's no more integrals, we can add our plus c. But of course, we have to substitute back in for x. So we have sec to the 4x on 4 minus sec squared x plus log of sec x plus c. And that is our final answer. The last example is the integral of sec cubed x. Now this is an integral where using a substitution with that identity 1 plus tan squared equals sec squared is not going to be too helpful immediately. We have to do a little bit more before we can use that identity. And we actually have to use integration by parts here. Now, how are we going to use integration by parts? Are we going to use 1 times sec cubed? Because we only have one function. Well, what we're going to do is we're actually going to split this up as 
sec x times sec squared x. And now we have to choose the function to integrate and the function to differentiate. So we have to choose u and v dash. And if we appeal to the Lie-8 rule, well, they're both trig functions. So which one do we choose to be u and which to be v dash? Well, it's much easier to integrate sec squared than it is to integrate sec. Even though we know how to do the integral of sec, it's much easier to integrate sec squared. So let's choose that to be v dash and we'll differentiate sec x. So the derivative of sec x is sec x 10x and the derivative, or sorry, the integral of sec squared is just 10. And so now we can apply the integration by parts formula. So this is going to be u times v, so sec times 10 minus the integral of u dash times v. So that will be sec x 10x times 10x dx. Now 10x times 10x, well that's going to give us 10 squared. But that 10 squared, we're going to make the substitution. We'll write it in the next line. We're going to make a substitution using our identity. So that'll be sec x 10x minus the integral of sec x. Now 10x is going to become sec squared minus 1. And let's expand that and see what we get. So sec x 10x minus the integral of sec cubed x minus sec x dx. Okay. Now let's distribute this negative one and break it up into two integrals here. So what do we what do we have on the on the right hand side? We actually have the integral of sec cubed. Let's get rid of this equal sign. The integral of sec cubed x. That's equal to sec x 10x minus the integral of sec cubed x and then minus minus will give us a plus. So we have plus the integral of sec x dx. And what you can see is we have an appearance or a recurrence of our original integral right here. Okay, so it's the same integral has popped up. So what we need to do is we need to bring that all to the left hand side. So we're going to have the integral of, well it's two times the integral of sec cubed x. Once we bring this one over, it becomes two times. And that's going to be equal to sec x 10x plus the integral of sec x. Now we've already done that, that was the second example. And that turned out to be log of sec x plus 10x. plus c. And so therefore, after we divide by 2, we get the integral of sec cubed x, which is a half sec x 10x plus a half log of sec x plus 10x plus a constant. And then that is our final answer.